Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme two, element six, migration. Listen for the register. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. The Office of National Statistics found that migration has been the main driving increase of population in the UK since 1990. This is due to the freedom of movement of people. Many migrants have come from the EU member states. The reasons why people have moved to the UK can again be because due to economic, social or political reasons. Now let's start off by looking at this idea of natural increase and in, uh, migration increase or migrant increase. Now a natural increase is when you take the difference between how many people were born in the UK and how many people died in the UK. And the difference is either a natural increase or a natural decrease depending on if there were more births or more deaths. So in 2018 the UK had a natural increase. So we had 7,031,000 uh, 7, live births and 616,000 deaths. So the difference between those two numbers is a positive number of 115,000. But if we look at migration, net migration is the number of people who've entered the country taken away from the number of people who've left the country. And it's estimated that there were 226,000 people who came into the country who intended to stay for more than a year. So if we look at the comparison between these two numbers, 226,000 compared to 115,000, there are more people coming into the country than are being born in the country. Now, that might sound bad, but in reality, this is actually a positive for our country, because if we didn't have any migration, then we would end up being in a quite, quite a lot of trouble being able to finance our own country, because a lot of our money comes from taxes of working people. But we'll come on to that in a little bit. So why do people actually want to come to the UK? Well, for economic reasons, there are a wide variety of jobs available, everything from low skilled farming jobs through to manufacturing to degree level jobs like working in a bank or being a doctor or working in healthcare or education. So there's generally a large variety and availability of jobs and the UK wage is good in comparison to the rest of Europe. There are political factors to consider. The UK has a stable government. It doesn't chop and change very often. It's democratic, so that means that you have the right to vote if you have the legal right to uh, to reside in the UK. And, we're have, and we have a good track record with human rights. So this is attractive to people who perhaps don't have this as a norm in the country that they've come from. There are also social factors to consider. We have a fantastic healthcare system. We have good... Uh, standards of education in our state schools and some people will move because they have family members living in the uh, in the country as well so what is the impact of migration on the UK well let's start off with the positives so less popular low paid jobs are filled so this is particularly when we have adverts that go out and UK residents wouldn't apply for them because they're low paid and they're seen as hard physical jobs. A lot of seasonal farming jobs would not be filled if it wasn't for migration, particularly from Eastern European countries. There's an increase in young adults paying tax, and this is really important. Our working age people are actually one of our smallest groups, and this is a worry for the government because if you're working, you're paying taxes. You're contributing to the economy, and these taxes are used to fund improvements to our country. If we don't have a large working population, we don't have a large tax base and our country is going to suffer. So that's why we're talking about why an increase in migration might actually be a good thing for the UK. There's a more diverse culture offering a variety of foods, music, clothing and all other sorts of things that the migrants will bring with them. The UK has always been a melting pot of cultures. It brings a bit of variety to our island and that's always been seen as a positive. There's also an increase in birth rate due to foreign mothers, uh, foreign born mothers having more children. And again, this is good because it links back to when they get to the age of 18, they will then become a uh, contributing member of our economy and paying taxes, which is gonna improve our country over time. The negatives, well, it's going to place pressure on our schools as we have more young families coming in and having children or bringing children, children with them. 
then there's going to place pressure on school places, but particularly in providing uh, support for non-English speaking pupils. Housing prices will increase as more people come into the country, the demand for housing increases, so the price for that housing increases as well. Now I've got the same point here in the negatives as I have in the positives. So an increased birth rate due to foreign born mothers having more children. It is a positive, but you can see how it could be a negative. So if we're having more children being born, then it's going to place an increased pressure on schools, healthcare, housing prices as well. So it could be seen as a double-edged sword, this one. Well, that brings our lesson to an end, but continue at your own pace by completing the now try tasks for homework. Class dismissed.